Okay. Grace and peace to you, my friends. Today I'm going to talk a little more about some of the things that we find in Ephesians. And today's focus is on the second section of Ephesians, where it talks about walk. Now, I've been studying with this a little bit in this book by Watchman Nee. It's a classic of Christian life. Sit, walk, stand. And there's a lot of very important things that we can learn in this book. One of the main points he says in the beginning is that Christianity begins with a big done, not a big do. We begin with what God has done. You know, Adam was created on the sixth day, which means Adam was created to live in the Sabbath, the seventh day, the day of God's rest. So the Christian life is about living in God's rest. And it's also about walking from that rest, from that position of rest with Jesus Christ. Now, I've been doing some thinking about this and what it means to walk as a Christian, to live out our life as a Christian. Eight times the idea of walking or living out our life is mentioned there in Ephesians, so it's a pretty important idea. I'm going to start with a question for all of you, and I'll explain where I'm going with it. Well, first of all, I want you to think about sheep. You know, it's been raining outside today, and Saturday I went for a drive, and I went by a, a pasture, and there was a flock of sheep out there in the pasture. And I noticed something, that they're out there in the field, in the pasture, they get rained on and they get wet, and the sun comes out and the warm sun warms them, and sheep are covered with wool. So with the rain and the warm sunshine, why don't sheep shrink? Well, actually there is an answer to that. But I want to talk about sheep a little bit. You see, several years ago, I preached a sermon, and you may have heard messages like this, where they talk about sheep and the Good Shepherd and the 23rd Psalm. And a lot of times we talk about how sheep are so dependent. They're dumb. They get lost. The shepherd has to come after them. They can't defend themselves. All kinds of things that are problems for sheep, that they need a lot of care and attention all the time. After I preached that sermon, one of the women in the church came up to me and said, you know, after that message, I just feel dumb. Well, that really wasn't my point. That wasn't what I was trying to do. I was trying to bring out the idea that sheep do best when they depend on the shepherd. So instead of looking at what's weak or wrong or whatever about sheep, you know, how, how they're not successful or competent in, in different ways, how about we look at what's right and good about sheep? See, first of all, sheep know the voice of their shepherd. I've heard that in some villages that all the sheep at night would be kept in one big pen. They're all in one pen. And when the shepherds come to take them out to their own pastures, the shepherds can stand there and they can call to the sheep, and the sheep know the voice of their own shepherd. So the sheep divide themselves into the appropriate flocks and follow their own shepherds from this one massive flock. They divide out. They know the voice of their shepherd. And the second thing we see about sheep is that they flock together, they stay together. When they stay together, when they stay together with each other, that's when they're safe. If they go off on their own and try to do things their own way, that's when they get into trouble. Like the story of the 99 sheep and the one that was lost. And the shepherd has to go after the one that was lost. So sheep flock together, they stay together. And the third, and this is the most important thing 
I believe, to remember about sheep. You see, sheep are meant to do one thing. They have one purpose. Sheep are meant to produce wool. So I did some studying and looking up and also read a little bit about what some shepherds have said about sheep and about wool. You see, wool is very different than hair. It's not the same thing. Sheep do have hair. It's called kemp. But wool is very different. See, hair is kind of smooth. It's hollow. It's hard to train to, in one position or another. Just ask women about doing perms and curling their hair and so on. It takes quite a bit of work, and it doesn't last. So hair is different. Wool, on the other hand, wool is solid. It does something called crimping. If you bend wool, if you press into it, it'll crease, and it'll hold that new shape. It'll bend and crease. It can mat together. It can felt. Wool has something else. It also has microscopic barbs on it. So when you press it together, work it, rub it against each other, wool will bind together and can form a very, very strong material. And there's different qualities of wool. There's actually wool that was used by the Vikings for their sails because they had a very fine quality and it was sturdy and they could make their sails out of wool because of the impressive qualities of it. Wool also does something else. Wool can hold water and air. It can retain maybe about a third of its size in water. And it can hold, because of the way it crimps and binds together, it can hold a little bit of little pockets of air in it. So wool is the only fabric that can really stay warm when it's wet. Nothing in nature or man-made can do the same. So wool is this very special thing, and only sheep can make wool. So wool are very good at doing what they're supposed to do. They only get into trouble when they go elsewhere. Now, I'm part of the addiction response ministry, and we have programs and um, groups and so on around the county. And we learn a lot from Tracy Strawberry. Some of you may have heard her when she's been here to speak. We're going to try to get her to come back next year. One of the things that she teaches us, one of the lessons that we've learned from her teaching is about staying in our lane, staying where we're supposed to be. As sheep, we have a purpose as God's sheep with Jesus as our good shepherd. Well, God has given us a purpose. God has given us gifts. So if we look at the lessons from the sheep, if we look at it the same way, we should know and exercise our spiritual gifts. That's when we are doing what we should. Know the shepherd's voice. Remember, that was the first thing we said, is the good qualities of the sheep. How do we know the shepherd's voice? Through the word being rooted in the Word of God. So as we spend time in the Word, we learn what our spiritual gifts are, and where we're called to stay in our lane where we're supposed to be. So residing in the Word, number two, staying together, fellowship. A lot of people try to say, well, can't you be a Christian on your own? You don't have to go to church or Bible study or fellowship with others or praying with others. You can be a Christian. Well, a sheep is still a sheep, but when do they get in trouble? When they go off on their own. If we really want to enjoy the grace and the gifts of God, it's when we fellowship with one another. Because you have gifts that we need, and I, we have gifts that you need. Sharing the gifts with each other to experience the fullness of God's grace. Because our Heavenly Father is a God who loves to give gifts, and we all have gifts for the benefit and for the enjoyment of each other. So... Being part of the flock, fellowship, is such a very wonderful gift that God gives us. And number three, what are we meant to do? Well, very simple. What are we meant to do as Christians? We're meant to share Jesus Christ. The wool we produce, the product we produce, well, it's the love that Jesus Christ 
showed all of us and shared with all of us on the cross that he died and that he rose from the dead and we know that he went to heaven to prepare a place for us. So knowing that truth, the truth of the cross, knowing that good news, that's ours to share, that people can enjoy today being the sheep of his pasture as we listen to our shepherd's voice. Amen. <laughs>